Hey guys, guess what? Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a quilt top in about an hour. I can't wait to show you all the details on how to make a Jelly Roll Race quilt. Hey, I'm Kristen with icstarwishquilting.com. Thank you so much for joining me today and watching this video. I love to share tips and tricks for the modern quilter, things to make your life just a little bit easier. I'm gonna show you how to turn this right here. This is just your standard Jelly Roll into a gorgeous quilt top. And it's gonna take you, um, I'd say less than an hour. It may take you about an hour on your first time, okay? After that, it's gonna get so much easier and you're gonna like kind of cut that time down. Let's talk through a few things first before I show you exactly how to make this quilt top, okay? So, first of all, what is a Jelly Roll Race quilt? It's a really fun way to make a quilt top. That's all it is. It's just a method that's really fun. Basically, here's the rules for a Jelly Roll Race quilt. There are no rules, okay? All you do is you start with a standard jelly roll. Now, this one has 40 pieces, okay? I've been talking about jelly roll projects this whole month, okay? This is the biggest project that you're gonna make with your jelly roll. It uses the jelly roll with 40 strips in it. The quilt top size that it makes is about 50 inches by 64 inches. So like, it's a good, nice size throw quilt. Now, if you wanted to add some borders to that, make it a little bit bigger, do some different things with it, you can totally do that. That's that's your call, you're the designer on this. But I really like to use jelly roll quilts as kind of a, a palette cleanser, okay? <laughs> you know, think about like your five course dinners, right? You wanna cleanse your palette in between each expansive, amazing course, right? So think about this jelly roll quilt as your palette cleanser because you've worked on this really hard quilt. It was very tedious, it was time consuming. There was like so many rules and regulations and like it had to be this exact size and make sure you have this exact seam allowance and all of this and, and quilts can get kind of crazy, right? These jelly roll race quilts are fun, okay? Now, as you go along, and as you see in the tutorial in just a few minutes, this quilt comes together really fast. It starts really slow, and you're probably thinking, what in the world am I doing? And then as you start to see it come together, you're gonna be amazed at just how fun it is. There's not really any rules, okay? Um, there, There's no thinking, there's no like planning ahead. It's just, you just start sewing and you go. With the Jelly Roll Race, style quilt, you have to give up control on the pattern. You have to give up control on where the patterns and the fabrics come together, okay? It's just the way it is. You let the fabric come together where it will. That's just how it is. And it's kind of, um, it's kind of freeing. Now, for my OCD friends who are kind of like, you know, starting to sweat, starting to feel like, oh God, I don't know if I can do that. I get you. I get you, okay? Because that's me. That's me. I don't, um, when I first started doing jelly roll quilts, I wasn't like comfortable with, you know, just letting all control go. Okay, that's just not how I quilt. I am, you know, design background here. I like to know which patterns are gonna come together and all that. But if I can get over it, you can get over it. Also, hey, I have something really, really exciting to tell you about. I can't forget to tell you this, okay? So on May 13th, 2021, I want you to mark your calendars because I am going to be hosting a live virtual jelly roll party, okay? We are going to make this quilt together. Okay, we're gonna make a Jelly Roll Race quilt together. There's gonna be prizes, there's gonna be fun. I'm gonna have a link down below. It's gonna have a form on the page when you go to it. You can sign up and I will remind you about that party. All you're gonna need is your computer, your sewing machine, and your Jelly Roll, and we'll be good to go. Just for entering into this and signing up, you're gonna be put into a drawing for a $25 Amazon gift card and there's gonna be more prizes at the party as well. So it's gonna be really, really super fun. I hope that you can make it. Don't forget to sign up using the link down in the description below. Okay, enough talk. Let's turn this into a quilt. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to unwrap my jelly roll, get all of my fabric pieces laid out here so I can see what it is I have. Now, I mentioned earlier that some of these jelly rolls have two different strips of the exact same fabric. So I'm gonna separate those out into two different piles and kind of just divide it up a little bit 
because I kind of do want to do this random, right? I'm trying not to think too hard about it or make a big deal about where all of my fabric pieces go. But I do, like here, there's only one of these. So we'll just stick that over here and just divide it up to where I can grab different pieces and I don't have two particular pieces right next to each other. Now it doesn't mean that they're not going to fall next to each other on the quilt because that part is kind of random, but I just kind of like to lay it out to where I can grab whatever color I feel next. Here's another one. There's only one of these. So that must be my, <laughs> that must be the pair to my yellow. Look at all of these beautiful fabrics. Isn't this so wonderful? You have these mix of these kind of starburst ones. You have these little polka dots that look like dice. You have these nice lines. There are so many good textures in here. I love them because I know some of you are going to ask. This is actually a Violet Craft Modern Classic Jelly Roll. Okay, so it's Violet Craft fabric here. It's called Modern Classics and it's just kind of a beautiful solids with a little bit of texture in it. And um, you know, it has a really nice rainbowy color effect. First thing I want you to do is just grab one at random. We are going to stitch them into one really, really, really long strip. So they're gonna be all sewn together. Now here is an option where you can decide how you want to do this. Some people like to sew these together. Let's take this one for example. And by the way, you're gonna open them up when you sew them, so you're only sewing one layer of fabric together. Some people like to sew these at an angle, so you're gonna have a nice 45 degree line right here. So when you open it up, whoops, let's get this up here. So when you open it up, your seam between your fabrics is going to be like this. So you'll have that nice little 45 degree angle there. That's totally up to you. Personally, I like to do a little bit less fuss and just sew a straight line right here so that when I open them up, I have good vertical line right there. That's your personal preference. Whatever works for you is what you should do. Whatever you decide to do, pick one and stick with it. So let's take this over to the sewing machine and let's start sewing all of these pieces together. Now, before you get your party started, make sure two things. You have your quarter inch foot right here. You want nice straight quarter inch seams. This quarter inch foot is going to be your key, okay? You're going to love having this foot here. You also wanna make sure that you have a full bobbin down here. There's no need in stopping your party halfway through, okay? Have a nice full bobbin down here on the bottom and a nice full thing of thread at the top because we're going to be going through lots and lots and lots of thread today. Okay, so you're gonna get your first two fabrics. You're going to put them together. You want to make sure that if there's any like selvage here on the end, you don't need to worry about that right now, but make sure that it doesn't end up in your quilt. So I'm going to put it down. And sew my first seam right here. Notice when I get to the end, I'm not going to stop and cut my thread. I'm just gonna keep going. I'm gonna sew a little bit to where this is at the back and then I'm going to grab the other end of this and put it face down here and grab my next fabric. Now, I'm not really paying a whole lot of attention to which fabric I'm grabbing. That's part of the beauty of it, right? I lift up my presser foot, tuck it in there, and this whole quilt is going to be very random. Sew to the back and then grab this. Make sure it's face up because remember this, you're gonna put your other fabric face down on it. So you're gonna have right sides together and then you're going to sew again. Now we'll worry about trimming these seams later. Mostly the quarter inch foot is gonna come in handy a little bit later, but I don't want you to forget to put it on. So right now we're just sewing.
first stage of sewing out of the way, what you're left with is this crazy long like party garland style thing, okay? All of my jelly roll strips are sewn together. All of them have like the looped ends except for the very first one that I did, which is, I don't know, somewhere over here, and the very last one that I did, okay? Next, we are going to cut them all apart. For this step, I like to use one of these. Scissors work just fine, but you know, if you have really fun tools around your sewing room, you might as well use it. I use this a lot for chain piecing. It's just, it's a little plastic block. It's kind of hollow on the inside, but the important part is this thing right here, okay? It's got just a little bit of a blade in there that you can use to cut your fabrics. Now one thing is a lot of these strips came with a pretty hefty selvage edge, okay? And that's going to add extra bulk to my quilt. Um, I could have trimmed this off before I started, but I didn't. So I'm just going to quickly take my scissors and chop this down to about a quarter of an inch on here just to, um, I don't know, between a quarter and a half an inch. I'm not going to be super 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 picky about it but I don't want that extra bulk to be out of my seam so I'm just going to trim those down real quick with a pair of scissors. I mean right now I've got about 1600 inches worth of fabric here that's 1600 inches of fabric all sewn in one long long line so and that's I mean that's rounding right that's not exactly I didn't measure this but you have 40 strips at 40 inches each uh yeah that's about 1600 you know inches of fabric here so okay so I have all my fabric here I have my two end pieces right here now this is probably the most important step okay so it doesn't matter which one you do it on the you know this one or this one, but one of your strips you need to offset, okay? So I'm gonna go about halfway at my strip and this is where I'm gonna start sewing. All of this is going to be cut off, okay? You're just, you can use it on another project, save it for a scrap, but what you want to do is you want to offset them because if I sew both of these, top to top, when I get down to the bottom here, these seams are gonna be in the same exact place. And I don't want to have to worry about matching up seams or seams being just slightly off. Like, this is a no fuss quilt, right? So we're not gonna fuss about it. However, that is a step that you definitely need to not forget. So I'm gonna throw everything else on the floor for right now, which is, it's kind of making a mess, okay? It's gonna kind of make a mess, but you won't have to worry about such a big pile in for very long so I'm going to offset this and also if you're worried about like your your jelly roll pieces getting tangled um, I'll show you how to fix that in just a minute when we reach to the end because it never fails mine is always tangled right at the very end so I am going to sew a quarter inch all the way down and it's gonna feel like you're sewing forever just let it keep going behind your machine here and till you get all the way to the very, very end. Make sure you have a nice and even quarter inch seam all the way down. This is where this little bar on this foot is going to come in handy. It's gonna keep your fabric nice and straight all the way down. You want that straight quarter inch seam. When you come to an area where you have a seam right here, notice I'm still on the green on this side. The seam is gonna pop right in the middle of the green. I love it. When you come to the seam right here, um, you have a couple options. You can open it and just sew it open. You could also have pressed it beforehand, but um, this is a no fuss quilt, right? This is why we're doing this. It's no fuss. So I can press it open like this right before it goes underneath my needle, or what I normally do is just have it to one side and make it really easy because a no fuss quilt is a no fuss quilt. We're not going to worry about pressing right now.
Okay, so I'm kind of coming to the end here. I'm almost there. And um, what I have is this kind of tangled loopy mess, right? So as I sew closer and closer to the end, it's just gonna get more and more tangled. So I'm gonna show you a really, really easy way to fix that. <laughs> I'm going to go out as far as I can on this loop and find the center. And then I'm just going to snip it right there and untangle these edges to where they're not all looped and twisted anymore. And then I'm going to keep sewing until I reach the very, very end. Now, I didn't quite cut it right in the center there, and that's okay. I'm just gonna snip off that little bit of extra right there and toss it aside. So, that was a really, really long seam. And this is the this is the longest seam that you will have to do on this entire quilt, okay? And you're done, so we're going to move on. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to open this up. We're going to take this end right here and pull everything else down here until we get to the top. Okay, so keep going until you get to the very, very top. And I'm gonna go ahead and trim this up here to where I had taken half of this one out and attached this in about in the middle-ish area. So I'm going to go ahead and trim that and toss this piece for scraps for later. Now, we're going to open this up a little bit and we're going to match these seams and sew all the way down this side. Now this will be half the length of the seam that you just sewn, okay? So we're gonna pop it back in there and go all the way down one side. Now, I like to try and keep it as tangle free as possible, but if you, when you get down to the end and there's still like a little twist in there, all you gotta do is take your scissors and snip it at the very end so that you can untangle those pieces and unravel those pieces. One side to two seams. Now we're gonna go from two to four. I am at the very end again and <laughs> there's a little bit of a twist right there so I'm gonna go ahead and snip this to undo that put them back together and finish it off so now we've gone from one really really long 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 strip to two strips to now we're at four strips and things are starting to come together. Now this is where the real quilt magic starts to happen. You're gonna go from four strips to eight strips. So take the end that you just finished and go all the way back up to the top again. Open it back up and stitch these two sides together. And now that the seams are becoming shorter and shorter because you keep cutting it in half every single time that you go, it's going to start happening faster and faster to get to the end of your strip. Look at that. I managed to do it without any like twists in there. So process is still the same. You're going to chop this. Right across that folded seam there and continue to sew. And now we have eight all the way across. Isn't that fantastic? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we're going to take this up to the top 
and sew all the way down again. I know it's hard to see from this angle right here, but we have a total of 16 pizzas now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 across. We're going to do this one more time for a total of 32 rows. Bring the bottom all the way up to the top and sew down again. Here is the finished quilt. Now I can't get all of it in the frame because I don't have enough room to move back. So I'm gonna have to show you a couple other pictures, okay? Hey, if you want more tips, tricks, and tutorials, for the modern quilter, for you, my friend, make sure and subscribe to my channel, please. I'm really trying to grow my subscriber count, reach more quilters who are in need of just making it easy, making it less stress, and figuring out ways to create beautiful things every single day. That's what I do. If you are subscribed, thank you so much for returning. I love, love, love hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching this video today. I hope that you learned something. I hope that you go out and you get yourself a jelly roll and you have some fun with it. I love to do these on the backs of my quilts, okay? They make for really fun and interesting backs. You can also cut your own jelly roll scraps, okay? Make your own jelly roll sizes. Just use regular yardage fabric. You don't have to actually like buy the pre-cut jelly rolls. You can make your own yardage fabric into jelly rolls. Something that coordinates with the front of your quilt. It just makes the back of the quilt interesting as well. Don't forget to sign up for the jelly roll party that I have next month. It's going to be super fun and exciting. I can't wait. I'm really, really, really looking forward to having that time together with you. I know I originally said that this was going to be Jelly Roll Month, okay? But um, it turns out I have a lot more to share than just a month. So scratch what I said earlier. This is going to go a little bit longer than a month, but it's going to be fun. I have more stuff to share with you next week, and I look forward to seeing you then. I'm Kristen with IcyStarsQuilting.com. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.